I don't know if you guys have heard, but presumably because you've read the title of today's video, you've now heard, the J League has been added to Football Manager J1, J2, J3 for the first time in over two decades. Japanese football is represented in Football Manager. And in fact, almost a decade ago on this channel, I did a video using a custom database where we managed in J-League. So the fact it's now officially in the game naturally excites me. And I was very excited when the J-League themselves reached out to me on Twitter and asked if I wanted to do a video for their channel and one for my channel in conjunction with one another. So today here on Worth the Space, we are talking about the top five teams to manage, in my opinion, some really interesting options out there. I feel like if you're not familiar with Japanese football, there's some untold stories that I'm going to tell you about that might just convince you to manage a couple of these teams. And meanwhile, over on the J-League channel, we've done the top five wonder kids in J-League that are available in Football Manager. Go check out that video once this one's done. There is a giveaway going on over on their channel too. I'm very excited to get into things. Let's run the intro and get into number five, shall we? In a number five, we have potentially the fastest growing team in the history of Japanese football. I don't even feel like that's an exaggeration for a wacky FC here of the J2. They made their J-League debut last year in J3 and immediately won that league. And let me tell you now, this team, they have a history of winning. They were promoted as champions in Japanese leagues in 2015, 16, 17, 18, 19, 21, and 22. They've had seven promotions in the last eight years. And by the way, if you're wondering about the shape of the club's badge here, it is the shape of the Fukushima prefecture that they're based in. Their rivals are Fukushima United. They dispatched of them. Fukushima has stuck a league below them now. So Iwaki FC are the new kids on the block in J2, and I suppose that is reflected in their pre-season predictions and expectations from the board. They wanted to be competitive in the Emperor's Cup and just attempt to avoid relegation in J2 it could be a difficult season. Football Manager does say here on the general screen, they have a media prediction of sixth. That's not right. J2 is a fiercely competitive league, and when you go to the overview screen and the season preview, they're predicted to finish rock bottom. And well, when you load up Football Manager, the first thing that's going to be notable to you is the fact you've got a first team squad of 18 players. Yet yeah, the squad needs reinforcements. And well, if you want to add players, uh, minor issue here, you're going to start with a negative wage budget. There is transfer budget to move over, but in terms of what you're going to be able to do to manoeuvre in the market, it's going to be tricky. This is a team that have had a meteoric rise through the Japanese Football League system, but sadly, it could come to a halt here. I do feel like getting another promotion might be slightly beyond reach, but the team that they have has hope. Sota Nagai is an explosively fast winger with really good ability to play on either wing. Riku Saga is an exciting young player at 24 years old, really good wing back, could also play as a winger though if you wanted to get him further up the pitch. And perhaps my favourite player in their team is Yuto Yamashita. This guy, 26 years old, has been playing for a wacky since 2019. It's his fifth year at the club. He's played in a lot of divisions with them. Awaki have had success in the league as they've climbed up through the divisions, but they've also had success in cups. Are you going to be able to take them that one step further, get them to J1, win them an Emperor's Cup? I feel like that has to be the end goal. This team has an absolutely bonkers story, a crazy rise, perhaps the quickest rising team in the whole of world football. Give them a go. It's not going to be easy in J2, let me tell you. We've had a J2 team, let's head one tier up to Yokohama FC, who last year were playing in J2. Yokohama FC are a team that on occasion have made appearances in J1, but have never been able to establish themselves. That is going to be your challenge. This club was only founded in 1998 following the merger of two clubs, and in fact, it was the first professional supporter-owned club in the whole of Japan. Now, if you're a football fan outside of Japan, you've probably not heard of Yokohama FC before, but you might have heard of Kazuyoshi Miura, this guy, the world's oldest professional football player, also known as King Kazu. And if we go to his club profile screen, uh, understandably, he's a bit of a legend at Yokohama FC, joined them in 2005, helped them get that promotion for the first time in their history to J1 for the 2007 season and stuck it out with them through thick and thin until just a few years ago. I will say now, Football Manager researchers sort this out. He's in the icon section, not the legend section. If anyone is meant to be a legend of a football club, it has to be this man. This is an injustice. Now, in spite of the fact you are predicted to finish rock bottom of the league, the board want you to establish yourself as a J1 team. It's going to be a difficult first season in J1 
Here is your squad at your disposal. Slightly more players than a wacky, which I suppose is a plus point. The core of your team here is going to be your foreign Brazilian trio. Caprini here is a decent option on the left and right hand side with some decent pace in those wide areas. Yuri Lara is a player they picked up upon their promotion, a really well-rounded centre mid with a bit of a defensive specialist edge to him. And last but not least, we have Gabriel here. So really, you've got a Brazilian spine to your team, you just need to build off it. Their squad isn't the youngest by any means, so to have extended success here at Yokohama FC, you are maybe going to have to look to bring in some young talent, maybe try and nurture your own. And to be fair, the facilities are far from awful here. There is definitely a chance of getting some good players through your youth intakes. I feel like if you're looking for a medium-term save game in Japan, Yokohama FC is probably the save game for you to check out. Predicted to finish 18th, newly promoted to the division, a club who have been here before but never really stayed up for an extended period. Can you take them to the top? That is, that's the aim. Matsumoto Yamaga are one of the best supported teams in the entire of the J-League football system, and yet they find themselves down in J3 following two relegations in the last four years. The team was founded in 1965 and has one of the best stories for its founding ever. It was made of players playing for the Nagano Prefecture team, and they met outside the Yamaga coffee shop at the Matsumoto train station. So they called themselves... Matsumoto Yamaga. Genius. The team was originally called Yamaga Soccer Club, but they were renamed in 2005 in a hope it would get them to play in J League football. Sadly, they had to wait till 2012 for that. But following on from their J League debut, just two seasons later, they were promoted to J1. And whilst they wouldn't stay there, they would return for one further stay. But for the first time in their history last year, they played in J3. Unlike a lot of teams at this level, they have some insane support. In fact, you can see here in Football Manager. 5,000 season ticket holders, which for a J3 team is bonkers. They failed to get promoted from J3 last year, but the aim for this year is still sky high. The board want you to finish in the top four spots of J3. Sadly, a top four finish wouldn't be enough for promotion. You are going to need to finish top two if you want to get out of this league. And with some very decent teams relegated down to J3, the competition at the top is going to be fierce. Two key players stand out in this team. The first is Yota Shimakawa. This guy has been playing for Yamaga since 2017. He's played a fair amount, has been out on loan for the last couple of years. He is going to be essential to a J3 campaign. And one-time international Watanabe is your star striker. He, in fact, joined from Yokohama FC of all clubs for the start of this year. He is your star man, one of the highest earners, Lost a bit of his pace, but still a very good striker going forward. The squad itself only consists of 18 players, and if you're sat spotting a man called Polinio who can play centre mid, it's not the Brazilian Polinio you're thinking it is. The overall bank balance at this club is really healthy due to the fan support. You have a budget unlike many teams at your level. Transfer budget of £4 million, plenty of wage budget as well. I'd back you to get promoted first year. If you're looking to do a bottom to the top save, starting down in J3, I think you can't go wrong with Yamaga. One of the best supported teams, a team that deserves to be back towards the top. Maybe you can be the person to get them there. Perhaps should have pointed out sooner, these teams aren't actually in any particular order. I just feel like they're all fun teams to manage. Speaking of which, in at number two, a team that think three is the magic number, Sanfrecce Hiroshima. And if you're wondering, Jack, why have you said Sanfrecce like it's an Italian name? It's because it is an Italian name. <laughs> So San Frecce is a combination of the word for free in Japanese and Frecce, which I mean, I don't speak Italian, but I believe Frecce means arrow. Italians, let me know down below. I'll tell you what, it'd be awkward if that's wrong, wouldn't it? If my, if my notes are wrong, that is... Fire, fire the script writers. The story comes from a guy called Motonari Mori, who was originally from Hiroshima, and he gave his three sons three arrows and asked them to snap them in their hands. And they all snapped them easily, and then he handed them three arrows each to try and snap at once. And apparently three arrows are harder to snap, so you should stick together. It's why they've got three arrows on their badge. Don't like, don't ask me. I'm not the person who came up with this law. Sanfrecce Hiroshima are a team with a very exciting future ahead of them. They are due to move into their brand new stadium in 2024. 30,000 capacity, it's going to be one of the best facilities in the entirety of Japan. On top of that, you've got great training facilities, youth facilities, excellent youth recruitment. Everything is set for success here. And yet, when you look at the club's history, in spite of previous J1 titles, they have failed to win the league in the last eight years. There are going to be big expectations on your shoulders when you come to Sanfrecce Hiroshima, but in year one, thankfully... 
The board only won a top half finish. But with a season preview predicted finish of sixth place, I'm telling you now, Continental Football Year One should be your ambitious aim. They have a very, very well-rounded team with Natsuda being the standout player. The 28-year-old, a real creative force, one-time international for the Japanese national team. A player born and bred at this football club. 28 games played last year. Let me tell you now, he is going to be playing plenty more for you in Year One. If there's one dilemma you're going to have here, it's what to do with free strikes. You've got Matsuki Kato, 25 years old, great advance forward. Douglas Vieira, yeah, look, he is 35, but the man can jump, 17 jumping reach. And on top of that, you've got Pieros Sotiriu. Definitely said that correctly. Uh, Cypriot International. No idea how he's ended up here in Japan, but he's loving his life here. One goal last year. Probably going to need to get more than that this year to justify his inclusion in the team. Yeah, three strikers. Good luck fearing them all in your team. San Francisco Hiroshima are a team on the dawn of a new era. They've got a new stadium coming in, some insane facilities. If you want to start towards the top of Japanese football, but with some lofty expectations, yeah, check them out. In at number one, we have got Ventfere Kofu, who play in J2. I guarantee you've never heard of this team. They are very unique. First things first, they play in the second division of Japan. Media prediction, where are they in this list? Where are they? Ninth. Ninth. This is a team, though, like no other, for one reason. Last year, they won the Emperor's Cup. You can see here, they famously lifted it into 2022. Last year, they finished 18th in the second division of Japan. But they basically won the main domestic cup in Japan. So they play in the Asian Champions League. After the absolute scenes of winning the Emperor's Cup, yeah, continental football, they're definitely not ready for it, but it's going to be fun in your first year. And your star player in this team is Peter Utaka. Yeah, this is a guy whose name has been around a long time in the world of football. He's 38 years old now. He will be 39 years old when the season starts for you. I do feel like when your star striker is 39. That's a problem. But Venfere here have one of the best, most exciting young Japanese talents in the entire database. That man is Yamato Naito. He is 18 years old and he is a very, very good striker with mad potential. Your main problem here might be fending off transfer interest from teams in J1. And given the fact that you are going to start over your wage budget with, well, some transfer budget to spend, you might need to cash in on him. Maybe not year one, maybe after you've developed him a little bit. When you do start a save game with them, Football Manager doesn't say they're going to be in a continental competition. Trust me, when the summer of year one comes around, you will be in the AFC Champions League. Board expectations for the year, rather modest, top half finish. And I suppose when you look at their recent league history, it's easy to see why that might be the aim. Once upon a time, they were a well-established J1 team. They've fallen on hard times, but maybe that first ever Emperor's Cup win could be the thing to really turn their fortunes around. I'm going to say this with some confidence. I don't think anywhere else in the world of football is there a tier two team playing in the Champions League of their continent in the first year in Football Manager. Venfere Kofu, if that isn't going to convince you to manage them, nothing is. The club's crest features VFK in the centre. You might be sat there thinking, well, that must stand for Venfere Kofu. It does. It also stands for Vital Fighting Knights. That is apparently a thing they call themselves. Don't ask me, it's in my notes. Anyway, folks, that is going to wrap up today's video from me. I hope you enjoyed this one. I wanted to include a little bit of the flavour and lore behind all the different teams in this list so you have something to latch on to. Hope one of these teams took your fancy. And if you are going to be managing one of these teams or a different one, you're going to want to head over to the J League channel and check out my video on the top five J League Wonder Kids. Over on the J League YouTube channel, we are doing a giveaway on the top five FM Wonder Kids video. To enter, all you need to do is be subscribed to that YouTube channel leave a like on that video and go down in the comments and let them know your favourite made in J-League footballer. Could be any footballer in the world of football, just as long as they started their career in Japan. Do also just want to give a big shout out to the J-League, firstly for reaching out for me and being able to do this collaboration with them, but also for letting me use some of the photos from their archive in this video. Really feel like it brought the whole thing together. Fun little change of pace to this video, hopefully you enjoyed it. I'll see you guys again on the next one. Other than that, it's me Jack, I'll talk to you guys in a bit. I'm out.